Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of The Homestead. Today I'm going to be showing you three useful things you can do with old air mattresses. So this one here is a twin air mattress that my brother decided to put a couple of holes in for some reason. But today I'm going to show you what we can do with this now that, well, my dad told me to throw it away. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to cut around the edges, as shown right here. We're going to make an incision about halfway between the air mattress with a knife. And then we're going to continue all the way around, around the sides. It helps whenever you have your hand like this and you just take the knife and go right through. It helps with avoiding situations like this. And also, depending on where you want the seam of your air mattress to be, you can have it be on a parallel side or a, like the longer side or it can be on the vertical side, the, the shorter side here, depending on like how you want to use it, both options are a good idea. Also a quick tip when you get to this section right over here is you can take, just take your knife and cut that section out as you don't need the inflator anymore. Just cut that out and throw it aside. Let's get back to it. There we go. Now that our mattress is cut, we around three of the side, the three of the main sides. What we need to do now is go over. And if you look inside the air mattress, you have these stringy. You have these stringy bits of string. Then what you just want to do, you want to go around with your knife, or if you have scissors, take your scissors, go down in there, cut them all out. All right, here we go. Interesting way I found to cut these air mattresses apart is to take, take it on like this, and then just take your knife, just hold it up like this, cut it right across like that. See? And you see here we have like the stringiness. And you just want to make sure you don't like go down too far into the, the air mattress or you will eventually cut over it, which is not good. You go now. And there you go now. So here we have the air mattress which we cut with our knife here. And now, as you can see, just one big sheet of artificial rubbery goodness. So now I'm going to show you a couple things you can do with your new air mattress. So here's the first thing you're going to be able to do with your new found air mattress tarp type thing. So. A lot of you will probably have wood stoves on your homestead, which will be a vital key in keeping your house warm. But what good is burning fresh cut or even just wet wood? It takes so much more heat to get heated up. So what you can do, take your brand new tarp thing here. You can just take it and lay it up over the top of your wood, like so. And look at that now. You have a nice, easy tarp for your wood that will stay nice and dry. 
Also, if you come over to, like, some of the anchor points, like, right here, you can just put, like, a bolt or something right here, then just tie a rope down, or take it to, the, like, a heavy object or something, and there you go. Your perfect, lovely new tarp for wood. Now, on to the next thing. So another thing you could use this here newfound tarp for is you can cover your boats with it. So this here is just a simple $600 canoe we have. And, like, I mean, it wouldn't be much good outside as the water still wouldn't get in. But this would be good for, like, covering dust. Now this, the one I made here is probably better suited for firewood as it's a lot wider. So if you cut it, like, along that, the panel right there, you can just, like, make it longer and then, like, use it for, like, covering boats or whatnot. So, on to the next thing, but we oh, got some special visitors over there. Oh, little pennies. Farmer's pride and joy. Look at them all. Alright, on to the next thing. Alright, so the last thing you can use your newfound, uh, air mattress tarp for is you can use it as a tent ground cover. Now, a lot of you might have had the problem of your tents being wet on the ground. Well, ground tarps actually help with that and also help retain some of the heat inside your tent. So like if you're in a cold area or something, it might help keep your tent warm. So you want to have at least three inches of space on either, either side of like how big you think your tent is. But you want to make sure it's a bit smaller than how big your tent is. Just to make sure, no, so say if it would rain, the water doesn't collect on the, um, the mat, then run underneath your tent and get you even more wet. So, what I have here is a Field and Stream 4-person cabin tent. And it's proved very helpful in many of my expeditions throughout the years. So, it's on. So you lay it on top of the mat like that, and you see that you can just tuck in the corners like that. And so, that's about it. Oh, well that will about do it for the first video in the series. Hope you all enjoyed. God bless. And good night.